Valley State Representative, Congressional Candidate Mike Bost on the other end of the line. Morning, Mike. How'd it go last yes. night? How'd it go Good with the morning. debate? I think the debate went as well as could be. Uh, sometimes when you're being attacked by both sides, I guess, you know. You know, I, I, I talked to a, a World War II veteran, uh, very much up in age, uh, that, that, uh, that told me, he said, if you're not catching flack, you're not over the target. Right. Well, I, I, before Mike and I went on, I said there's nothing like being number one of the polls, and there's nothing worse than being number one of the polls. There you go. Uh, there you at go. least from a personal standpoint, when people you know are saying stuff yeah, about you, a lot of a lot of things personal. Yeah, I, I, I think that's sad that that went down that path. You know, and but that that was largely in the media. I you know the tone last night. I didn't didn't think uh, the match no, the no. messaging. I mean, the messaging you see, especially on TV. Um, that messaging uh, was not reflected in last night's debate. No, I thought, no, you know, there were some questions made and 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 then some some, some punches traded, but other than that. All right, now one of the questions this morning, and and I'm I'm curious about this that you were catching some flack, and especially Democratic national people going over going after you overnight on claims that you want to cut Medicare, uh, right. Medicaid, and Illinois. Right, right. Let me explain to you exactly how they're spinning that. And let me first off say. I have never, ever said I want to cut Medicaid or stop any Social Security, either one. Never said it. Never said it. Don't believe it. I think it's an obligation owed to the people who have paid into it, and I will do everything as your congressman to make sure that I fight to defend that. So that being said and cleared up, let me tell you what they're doing. We, in, in a piece, we criticized our opponent for not voting for the Ryan budget, or at least not offering an amendment to remove certain things and still supporting the other good things that were in it. So whenever he said at last night's debate, you support the Ryan budget, not in an entirety, entirety I don't. But the, the, the mail piece that went out doesn't say that I would have voted for it in an entirety. I think that it is the obligation of the person elected to make modifications and and make those changes, or at least explain why. And he's not been doing that because I don't, well, I'm kind of believing that he just kind of voted where they told him to vote. And, but, but that being said, uh, so, so now, and and I think it's kind of neat what you said, the, the national Democrat bloggers are who is saying this or someone contacted by them to make that statement because that's got to be their spin. Because they're trying to paint me, just like we have in the state of Illinois, when they're claiming that somebody has made votes that never served in the legislature before. And so this is this has been, unfortunately, the next 26 days, it's going to be full of that. Did many of the messages that were run uh, by your opponent from the Democratic Party, uh, with the videotape of you and uh, one of your rants, that's very widely acknowledged as one of the top ten rants, I think, in the New York Times, political rants, uh, did those commercials uh, help or hurt you? You know, the polls kind of showing that they, they helped. Um, let me tell you why. Um, we needed to build our name recognition up in the St. Louis market. It did that, and as, as, the, as the, the name recognition went up, the, uh, the negatives and positives went up equally, and my positives were above my negatives up there. Uh, so uh, the, the, the thing is, we're, we're you know, we have to get the message out to, to focus on the issues. I'll focus on Mike, who Mike Boss really is. Uh, you know, I, you know, Tom, our family, my, my wife, and I think I told you this already, but my wife said it's amazing to me that every ad they show, you're wearing the same two ties, but they say you act like that all the time. Right. Let me, let me, and, and you and I have talked about that before. But it, it, which was part of the debate last night was character sure. and personality sure. in Washington. And sure. of course, the more direct attack recently is that you would make Washington wa- worse. Now, this has got to be kind of interesting for you. And I'm, I'm curious about this. Mike Boss joining a state representative, of course, congressional candidate. When an opponent runs, a Democratic opponent runs a commercial saying you've basically broken Illinois in its budget and you're the reason that there's every money problem in the state of <laughs> Illinois. The irony of that, I do not think is lost on the informed voter in Illinois? I, I at least hope not, because if there's one person that has been standing and saying we can't go down this path, here's the way we need to go, we can't borrow against the pension system, that would not be, you know, especially those that have paid attention to politics uh, for a long time here in the state of Illinois. 
they know uh, where and when I have been arguing, and we would not be in this shape because we should have never went down this path. But uh, that's that's politics, and Tom, how well you know that, and hopefully the, the informed voter understands that, and, and so it, it'll be interesting. Now, when it comes to these final uh, final days before the election, because that's the way I'm starting to think about it now is in days. I, w- I would imagine you're mm-hmm. counting them, too. You know, we have Ebola. We have minimum wage. We have ISIS. We have a $17 trillion debt. I mean, I, I keep going over these same items, and I keep look, trying to look outside of them. But the fact is, ideology is one of the items that's a solution or a better tack for uh, solving many of these problems. I mean, you can look at them independently, but once you have a certain ideology in place, uh, hopefully some of those problems take care of themselves in, in, in some very essential ways. And, and, and that's that's what this election is about, and that's because my opponent, either one of them, their own ideology will not allow us to get out of these problems. Mine will. Whenever we work to make sure that we remove senseless regulations, not safety regulations, senseless regulations that will allow us to compete in a worldwide market, to create jobs, to put ourselves back on top of the world market as far as production and as far as jobs and as far as trade and, and and, and become the powerhouse that we can be both in the military and also then also that includes protecting our borders. All of these things, and, and you want people off of social programs? Provide more jobs. You want to raise what everybody's making? Provide more jobs. It's, a, it, it's an idea, and, and, and you can't provide more jobs by creating more government. You provide more jobs by getting government out of the way. Mike, what do you have to do between now and November 4th to ensure a win? I have to go out, continue to talk to the people, have friends family members, everybody that knows and understands this, go talk to their neighbors and friends and the people in the coffee shop. We're going to put people on the streets. We're going to go ahead and continue a, a, a positive ad campaign. We're, we're going to continue to, to work to get our message out. And then we're going to leave it up to the voters.